biggest event, I think, was really the coming of the American Calum film to uh, Boca de Killarney, where they stayed for um, about four summers from 1910 to 1914, and that was broken, broken up by the war. There was the intention to actually establish a film studio in Killarney by this company, but uh, that never happened because of the war. And uh, they filmed, I suppose, 20 or 30 films based mostly on Bushiko dramas, lo uh, patriotic dramas and so on, and the life of the local countryside. In 1976, Annie O'Sullivan talked to Princess O'Con Lewin about her memories of those days, and in particular her recollections of Calum director Sidney Olcott. He started off on the stage, and I don't know how long he was on the stage when he decided to go into films. They were new at the time. And I don't know how long he was in films. When um, he was called into the head office one day in New York, and the map of the world was placed before him. And they said, we will send you anywhere you would like best to go. And he pointed to the little island at the top of the map and he said, I would like to go there. Because his mother was born in Ireland, I think there was I. But they came to Killarney that year and they made a film called The Lad from Old Ireland. In The Lad from Old Ireland, the young man of the house has emigrated to make his fortune in America. In his absence, his sweetheart and her family are threatened with eviction for non-payment of rent. In the nick of time and a true dramatic style, the lad returns with the necessary wherewithal. All ends happily, the landlord is paid and the family rescued. It is thought that it may have been the first American film made outside the United States and was a great success. such a success with the Irish in America that they decided to send a full company the next year. They came again in June, stayed a few days in Killarney, and then he thought Killarney wouldn't suit him, he would rather be in the country. And he was asked, he asked if there was any place out in the country, so he came to Beaufort. And I suppose it was the scenery as much as anything else. But uh, the first picture they made that year then was Gypsies in Ireland. Then came Rory O'Moore, Colleen Vaughan, Arna Pogue, Sean the Post, Conda Shaharan, You Remember Ellen, Dior O'Neill, and I don't know how many more. There were piles of them anyway that year. Rory O'Moore was a great favourite. It had everything. The sweetheart who is left behind as the hero is captured by the redcoats. He is rescued by the priest, escapes from the gallows and flees to America. 1911, that was the nicest, I thought that was the nicest picture of all. It started there at the waterfall, Cape Carney's waterfall. Rory and, and um, Kathleen met there, you know. And this spy, Bob Vignola, did the spy, and he um, saw them and informed the Ridcoats. And then the chase was on down through the mountains. It was most exciting. He got to the lake, to the shore of the upper lake, and he sprang into the lake, escaping from the Ritkots. And um, then one of the soldiers volunteered, who happened to be my brother, to go out and catch him. But the soldier got into difficulties, and Rory turned back and saved the soldier.
then the officer in charge who was Jack McGowan because of his bravery he wanted to let Rory free and no Bob Vignola wouldn't have it he was the spy of course and he wanted his money so they took him away took him prisoner and he was tried on the platform and found guilty and sentenced to be hanged Robert Fignola was both an actor and an assistant director with the Calum Company in the United States and in Killarney. He went on to become a respected director in his own right. Like Annie O'Sullivan, he was recorded for radio in Ireland in 1976. One Sunday morning, about a couple of months after our arrival, I attended high mass at the village church. The point came where the priest was to read the gospel. He ascended a few steps to the pulpit and read it. Then, placing aside his prayer book, there was a dramatic pause. With a grim look on his face and a menacing tone in his voice, he announced, instead of the usual sermon this morning, I want to talk about these tramp photographers that are invading our community. Then came a tirade of accusations that knocked us cold. He accused us of being there to degrade the Irish, said we were taking pictures of poor thatched roof homes instead of photographing the new modern buildings they have in Ireland. That he saw a couple with their faces all painted, making love in front of the old church graveyard, desecrating the bones of our ancestors, that they were joined by a man wearing the garb of a priest. His face was painted too, which is a disgrace to our vestment. That he saw many of our fine lads marching around in the uniform of old English soldiers, selling their souls to the devil for a few paltry shillings. That Mr. O'Sullivan should be ashamed of himself for keeping us at his hotel. That he was going to report us to the Knights of Columbus in the United States. He warned the people not to let us photograph their homes. That we should be driven out of town by them all getting together with sticks and stones and chasing us across the Beaufort Bridge. This was a terrific shock to the entire congregation, especially the O'Sullivan girls who left the church in 